Legacy Christian 808, Legacy Christian 808, what's up family, Legacy Christian 808 man, just wanted to show you uh, me flying with my family, one of my favorite things to do, check out this video, alright, so just wanted to let you guys know, remember, in about three weeks, we're going to switch to YouTube Live in the morning, 9 a.m., same time. But you can find us at Legacy Christian 808, Legacy Christian 808, Legacy Christian 808. All right. Get down. Ding. Okay, Legacy Christian 808. Don't forget. Go over there, check it out. YouTube. Legacy Christian 808, subscribe, like it, comment, we'll see you there, okay? Raja, Legacy Christian 808, all right, it's Pastor P. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Faith Family. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Woo! Awesome. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Sunday, glorious Sunday morning here on Facebook Live, uh, 9 a.m. service. Just a reminder, as Pastor Dow just shared, we are shifting over and oh, moving Legacy over Christian 808 man. to YouTube with Legacy Christian 808 Man. That's right. You heard it live and first from Pastor Darrell himself. So don't forget, we're shifting over in about uh, three weeks, so let everybody know, amen. And I'm glad because YouTube has a bigger reach for us um, in terms of getting the word out, getting the gospel, good news of Jesus Christ out, amen. Again, welcome to Legacy Christian Church. I'm Pastor Pio. It's so good to have you join us on this, again, beautiful, glorious Sunday morning. And I want to just say, hey, here at Legacy Christian Church, our vision, say it with me, family, if you know it, we thrive to be intentional in building his kingdom, culture, relational, and living life better together and generation in honoring God and his people, in Jesus' name, amen. And our mission here is to reach the young church, to respond as the church, and to release the church into the surrounding communities, Mount Olomana, the Pacific Rim, and the nations of the world. Before we get into service, before we uh, get into uh, praising God and, and the word of the Lord this morning and all that fun, fantastic stuff, um, and sharing the good news of the gospel and of Jesus Christ, a couple of reminders and some quick announcements. Don't forget to vote, vote, vote. Cast your vote October 5th. That's coming up real soon. I believe that's Wednesday already. No, wow, that's tomorrow. Much. Last day to register to vote if you haven't already registered. So please go out and register. And then voting starts, I believe, October 20th, early voting. Um, there's a You can vote live at the Honolulu Hale where they have the Christmas lighting every year. You can go there in person. Uh, I believe the hours is 7 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. So please, please go out. And then Saturday, I think it's 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So early voting starting October 20. And then the day of voting, the national day of voting is uh, November 4th. I believe it's the Tuesday. And, and that is also 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Okay? So don't forget, cast your vote. Cast your vote in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome, awesome. Uh, don't forget to push your share button. Invite your family, invite your friends, let them know that we are live in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning with thanksgiving. Your word says in Psalms 104, enter your gates with thanksgiving, your courts with praise. So, Lord, we come to do just that, to praise you, to honor you, and to thank you, Lord God, for you are a good God. And, Lord, we honor you today. And we say, come on, my, come, Holy Spirit, have your way, Lord, your presence we desire, your presence we seek after. In Jesus' name, and everybody say, Amen. Come on and praise the Lord with us, family. Yeah. 
rejoice and be glad in it. Hey, welcome everyone again to Legacy Christian Church and our Facebook Live uh, service this morning, 9 a.m. Again, hit that share button, invite your friends, let them all know we are on, on live. Amen. Uh, we are excited to be here with you this morning in the comforts of your living room and right here at the altar. Uh, no matter where you are, the presence of God is there. Amen. Because God is in you, and you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit resides in you. So thank you for joining us, and let's resound the presence of God. Let's sound the alarm. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Amen. And so again, family, thank you guys for joining us. I'm excited because today we have with us our featured speaker, our, our, our Kupuna leader, our fearless leader, our faithful leader, Uncle Charles himself. And before we call him up, if you have your Bible app or your Bible, I want you to lift it up. And let's declare our Bible pledge, our faith pledge in the house of the Lord. And if you are in your living room, could you please join us in standing? Or if you're here in person, just stand and let's declare and worship the king. Um, I, I, I liken this when, when, when the judge enters a courtroom. And what happens when the judge enters a courtroom? The people stand in honor of the, the court uh, or of the, um, the judge himself. And we have the ultimate judge. Come on, somebody. His name is Jesus. Amen. All authority has been given unto him. The Father has given him all authority and the final say, the final judgment of our lives. So thank God for Jesus. God. Amen. And just, just picture him entering the, the, his, his temple right now, whether it be in your living room or here live at, at the church sanctuary. Amen. So we're going to honor the, the house of God, the presence of God. And let's declare together. Ready? Go. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. God, show me today what you desire for my life. Not only to be informed today, God, let me be transformed today. Transform me to Christ-likeness and power to fulfill your great commission in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for Uncle Charles, our Kupuna leader. Amen. Welcome, Uncle Charles. Woo! Good morning, family. In the words of Pastor John Rudd, welcome to Church Church. Hallelujah. I will be here for the next three weeks uh, taking us on a journey in uh, the word that I have prepared for all of us today. But before I start, there is something I'd like to, to say first. I'd like to put out salvation there this morning. Uh, Try to get to you people early if you have someone joining you or if you share this with someone. I'd like to offer up the prayer of salvation for you. We'd like you to come to the to Jesus Christ. We'd like you to be a part of our, our spiritual family. We want you to be a part of his world. So if you are not a believer or you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior this morning, I want you to say this prayer with me. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I confess my sins to you and I thank you for forgiving me and cleansing me from all unrighteousness. I make a commitment now to follow you and your word. Amen. God is very happy that if you had said that prayer this morning because we got one more for him in our sight. Come on, baby. Yes. Uh, normally here, uh, Pastor Pio starts off with a, a funny. It's not really a funny this morning, but it's it's a short little thing. It's a short joke. How are stars and false teeth alike? You might have heard this before. They both come out at night. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, are you 
put it out there, you probably get it. You guys got some of those. Well, this morning, my sermon topic will be tame your tongue. Um, in a time like this, since back in March when uh, this pandemic started, I'm sure a lot of people had a lot of things to say. They were probably negative, some of them was positive. But the words that we speak bring out what we're feeling inside. Yeah? And all of this is happening for a reason. I have no idea why it's happening, but it's happening for a reason. Maybe the Lord is trying to put us back in line. Maybe the world has gotten out of line. Maybe we've lost track of who we are, where we are, and why we are this morning. And believe it or not, a lot of times uh, our words can really hurt people. Um, they're hurtful. You can alienate yourselves from your family, your friends. And you could even upset some strangers that you meet just by things that you say that they don't agree with. That brings me to my first point this morning. A lot of you have heard this little saying, someone has the gift of gab. We all kind of know what that, that gift of gab means, yeah? That person possesses a power over words. He or she has the ability to speak easily and confidently in a way that makes people want to listen to them and believe them. They can talk anyone into anything just by saying things to you. A lot of the times you get these uh, telemarketers that call you on the phone and many of them will tell you, please don't hang up, but you know it's a robocall. They could probably sell you the shirt that you have on your back, these people who can talk. They're very eloquent, fluid, and they're very persuasive. I have two examples this morning on the different sides of the spectrum of taming your tongue. The first one is Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King was most of, one of the most notable men of the 20th century. He rallied a million people of all races during a time of great segregation and oppression. People were drawn to him. Why? It's just one man. It's because he spoke the truth. He lived and championed his cause and dedication to his purpose. The purpose was to unite mankind of all creeds, races, and colors. Unfortunately, Martin Luther King was assassinated on April 6, 1968 because of his beliefs and his conviction. That man spoke words that got to people. He got to their hearts. He got to their minds. He not just said the words. He told them the truth about what was going on. He told them the truth about the difference between the black and the whites. And he knew that it wasn't right. That was a man who used his speech for the good of the world. Now, on the other hand, I, I picked an example of this man. His name was David Duke. Some of you may have heard of who this guy is, or you may have heard his name before. David Duke was a white supremacist, far-right politician. He was a convicted felon, and he was a former grand wizard of the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. He advocated neo-Nazi and anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. During the 1990s, Duke defrauded his political supporters by pretending to be in financial straits and he solicited money for basic necessities. See, this guy could talk to these people, his, his, his friends, his buddies, other ones who believe just like him. But at the time, David Duke was not financially strapped. But he was able to talk these people into giving him money so that he could continue to use that money for his own personal investments, and believe this or not, recreational gambling. In 2002, David Duke 
pled guilty to felony fraud and served a 15 month sentence. You think he talked his way out of that to get only 15 months? I'm not sure. But he ended up in Big Spring, Texas. And today, David Duke is still alive. What a contrast. You got Martin Luther King who's doing something for good, trying to help the world. And then you have this man, David Duke, who's doing things for himself. Both of them had the use and the power of words. Words, more so. Our words are expressions of our hearts. Mm. It's what's yeah. going on inside yeah. of us. If you want to know what a, peop what a person is really like, all you need to do is listen to what they're saying. If you listen long enough, you're going to learn a lot about them. You know, sometimes we have the unrepentful tongue. It runs wild. It roams around. The tongue is quick to defend itself. The tongue is swift to attack others. And that tongue is very anxious to keep you under control. Always marked by bad intentions and evil. Come on. So this morning, that brings me to the first scripture that I'd like to share. And it comes out of the book of James. James chapter 3, verses 3 through 6. James chapter 3, verses 3 through 6. This comes from the NIV translation. When we put bits into the mouth of horses to make them obey us, we can turn that whole animal. This animal is like 2,000 plus pounds. And we put this thing in its mouth so that we can have control over it. You also have these ships back in the day, back in the time of Jesus. These were large ships. People think that uh, they had little dinghy boats running around. No, no. These guys had large sailing ships, and they were driven by the wind. But they were steered by a very small rudder on the backside underwater of the boat. Anywhere you wanted to go, the, the captain wanted to go, all he needed to do was turn that wheel. And that wheel, in turn, would turn that little rudder in the back of the ship, and it would make that huge ship go to the left or go to the right. It's like our tongue. Come on. It's a little thing. It's a small part of our body. But it talks a lot sometimes, boasts a lot sometimes, tells lies sometimes. Consider the forest. A small spark can start off. A huge forest fire. Things that are going on in California right now today. I, I, you know, California, I believe it's in Washington, it's in Oregon. That whole west side is just being burned by a small little spark that had started in three different areas, I believe it was. We need to understand what James was trying to tell us in these, in these two illustrations. The tongue is like the bit in the mouth of a horse. This animal, which is huge, which is something that I'm rather afraid of. I, I, I got on a horse once before and I vowed I'd never get back on another one again. That thing was just too powerful for me. Amen to that. And I was, I was afraid of it. But this little piece that is put in its mouth makes it able for us to control it. We can make this thing turn and take us to wherever it is that we want to go. A small little thing put into its mouth. At the same time, it's like the rudder on the boat. Large ships. They were bigger than we can imagine. They, one of these ships originally was to transport Paul across the Mediterranean en route to Rome. And that ship held 276 people. You can find that in Acts 27, 27, verse 37. We know that these large ships could even carry a thousand people at times. Yet, that huge thing was controlled by one little piece under the boat. 
Sometimes if you think bridling your tongue is way too hard for you, well, you're right. It is for me too. Sometimes you just something just comes out of you without even thinking. James says it's easier to steer a ship in a hurricane, tame a lion, or put the fire of hell out than it is to control our tongue and the things that come out of our mouths. Tongue is a fire. Unrighteous. The human man, we can tame the beasts, we can tame the birds, we can tame the reptiles. You see these guys doing it with the crocodiles. We can tame sea creatures, we can make them do jumps at the uh, ocean parks. But we cannot tame our own tongue. We cannot control that sometimes. We get oh. so emotional with things that we hear or things that are oh. said yeah. that it upsets you to the point where you're not even thinking. It just comes out of you. But you know why it just comes out of you? Because it lives, it was living in you. You thought about this thing. You worked on it. That's why today we need to learn to listen first and talk softly after you hear the words. That will take me to our, our second scripture this morning, which comes out of Matthew <clears throat> chapter 12, verses 34 and 35. You brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. Let me take you to the beginning of chapter 12 to show you how we got to this two verses. Jesus is walking through the grain fields with his disciples, and it happens to be on the Sabbath. The disciples are hungry, so they pick heads of grains and they eat it. But wow, the Pharisees, the Pharisees, it's like they're everywhere. They're following him. They're watching him. They're doing everything. But they see the apostles do this, and they say to Jesus, look at your disciples doing what's not lawful on the Sabbath. They were always looking for an excuse to get to him. So Jesus tells them, the Pharisees, haven't you read what David and those with him did when they were hungry? How they entered the house of God and ate the ritual bread, which wasn't lawful for them to eat, but only for the priests? Or haven't you read in the law on how on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath, but are blameless? So Jesus tells them, in this place, there's one who's greater than the temple. If you knew what this meant, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you wouldn't have condemned them. Now he's oh, telling them this. Man. The Son of Man is the Lord even on the Sabbath. Hallelujah. So Jesus leaves them there and he goes to the synagogue and there's a man with a withered hand there. So the Pharisees ask him, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? They're looking for something they can use to accuse him of, trying to find some kind of violation of the law because that's what they were all about. They were about the law. So Jesus tells them, you who has one sheep that falls into the pit on the Sabbath, won't you try to lift it out? So how much more better or how much Better is a man than a sheep. Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. So he tells the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretches it out. And it was restored like the other hand. Now the Pharisees are crazy. And they try to figure out a way to kill him this time. But Jesus knows this and he leaves from there. But the crowd follows him 
and he heals them all. All, not some of them. Jesus heals them all. Then he turns around and warns them to not talk about it. Then a demon possessed man is brought to him who's blind and mute. Jesus heals him also. So now the blind and the mute man, he can speak and he can see. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this man casts out demons by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. Jesus knows what they're thinking. He knows what's in their hearts. And he tells them, every kingdom, city, or house divided against itself won't stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he's divided against himself. How will his kingdom stand? So Jesus is trying to show the Pharisees who are, they basically know that they're telling lies. His kingdom stands. And then we get to that voice, I mean to this verse, where the brood of vipers, how can you say anything good? It's hard to understand how these people who came to teach about Jesus and God were the very ones who were trying to deter people from believing in Jesus and God, believing in the miracles that God had done, believing in the healings that he has done, believing in the lives that Jesus saved, the lives that he affected and followed him. You can see even the, the comparison there, how the Pharisees would say things because of what was built up in them, and how Jesus would say things because of what was inside of him. James sees the tongue as an instrument of extraordinary power, out of proportion in size to the body. His most significant connection of the tongue is to the heart. Our heart, whether it's been hardened by sin or recreated by grace, in Matthew 12, 36 and 37 from the NIV, Jesus said, But I tell you that men will have to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. For by your words you, you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. Wow, good. Come on. Come on. We go through this every day. Word. You go through it with co-workers. You go through it with people you meet in the shopping centers, people on the road. We need to pay attention to what we are saying. Our speech is one of the most important parts of our witness, our witness for Jesus Christ. No matter where you are, at home, at work, at play, at church, or in a group that you decided to join, each of these places where you meet up with these people, your tongue will reveal what's in your heart. We were created as an image of God to bless God. It's a hypocrisy if we become double-minded and sin. Because to bless God in one breath and then to turn around and curse someone else in another breath. We went from being something to pretty much being nothing. But this reminds me of a, the old cowboy and Indian movies. I don't know a lot of you, you may remember it on Saturday mornings, we get, get up early, you have our breakfast, sit on in front of the TV. Besides the cartoons, they'd have westerns. There's one line that I recall an Indian saying, and I'm sure you will too, but it was frequently repeated and repeated in these cowboy movies that it got stuck in my brain. Mm -hmm. You guys, you have any idea what it might be? White man speak with forked tongue. Mm -hmm. It was meant as, and it really was a damning indictment to these people. 
to the white man who came to take this country. A forked tongue is connected to a forked heart. Such speech is a mark of the double-minded man who is unstable in all of his ways. In this world, we're called to witness for Jesus Christ. That's never easy. And at times, it's terrifying, especially if you're just a beginner. We'll be laughed at, excluded. You feel like you may lose an argument, make the Lord look bad. If you're anything like me, share your Christian faith Sometimes it's intimidating when you think about sharing it with your family and your dear friends who do not believe in Jesus Christ. For me, I, for me, I fear ruining a relationship or causing an awkward moment with someone. I'll see them again the next, at the next family gathering and you may be uncomfortable. But God is clear in his word. Amen. We are to go and make disciples. The older I get, the more I realize this is a command. It's not, it's not a suggestion. And it doesn't necessarily mean going across the world or to another city. It could mean make, making disciples in your own household and with your own family. Two examples of people who, people in the Bible who said things and they did it out of love, yeah? You have Nathan, who rebuked, rebuked King David. The Lord sent Nathan to David. When he came to him, he said, Nathan is telling David now, there are two men in a certain town, one rich, the other poor. The rich man had a very large number of sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb that he had bought. He raised it and grew up with him and his children, shared his food, drank from his cup, even slept in his arms. It was like a, it was like a daughter to him. Now a traveler came to the rich man, but the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveler who had come to him. Instead, he took the ewe lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had come to him. King David burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, As surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this must die. He must pay for that lamb four times over because he did such a thing and had no pity. Then Nathan says to David, you are the man. David had all the riches. He had all the cattle. He had everything he could ever want. But what did he do? He went after someone else's wife. And to cover that up, he sent the husband out into the battlefield so that he would be killed. Yet David is so against this person for doing something like that, taking from someone else. Yet that's exactly what he had done himself. My second example is when Paul confronts Peter in Galatians. It's like Paul is calling Peter a hypocrite. When Peter came to Antioch, I had to oppose him to his face for what he did was very wrong. When Peter first arrived, Peter sat down and ate with the Gentile believers who were not circumcised. But afterwards, when some of the friends of James came, Peter wouldn't eat with the Gentiles anymore. He was afraid of criticism from these people who insisted on the necessity of circumcision. As a result, other Jewish believers followed Peter's hypocrisy and even Barnabas who was led astray by their hypocrisy. 
When I saw that they were not following the truth of the gospel message, I said to Peter in front of all the others, since you, a Jew by birth, have discarded the Jewish laws and are living like a Gentile, why are you not now trying to make these Gentiles follow the Jewish traditions? Mm -hmm. You and I are Jews by birth, not sinners like the Gentiles. Yet, we know that a person is made right with God by faith in Jesus Christ, not by obeying the law. And we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we might be made right with God because of our faith in Christ, not because we have obeyed the law. For no, no one will ever be made right with God by obeying the law. These things were not fun to say without risk for saying them. Yet they had to be said. And these two people said it with, without regard for what it might cost them. No matter how negative you are or have been or how long you've been that way, God wants to change you. In the early days after my confession to God, I still failed more often than I succeeded. But every time that I did succeed, I knew it got me a little bit closer to God's plan for my life. God can do the same for you today. It won't be easy. But the effort will be well worth it. Sharp word, a loose sentence, or being un unsympathetic can cause a destruction that cannot be extinguished. Words can consume and destroy a life. A small fire can destroy an entire forest. All it takes is an uncontrolled spark. So it is with our tongue and our speech. If the pen is mightier than the sword, is it equally true that we can kill a man as easily with the words we use as with a physical weapon? What do you think? Definitely. In Proverbs 17, 28, it says, Even a fool, when he keeps silent, is considered wise. So sometimes that means uh, just listen and don't talk. Word. If you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. Good. Think before you speak. This morning, I hope this was able to get to someone out there. Sometimes we don't even realize what we're doing daily. We're out there saying things that we shouldn't be saying, doing things that we shouldn't be doing, going places that we shouldn't be going. But the power of the tongue can lift us or it can hurt us. So this morning I'd like to close with this. Be very careful when you're in a group of people and you start talking. No matter what the subject is and no matter how you feel about it, sometimes it's just best to be quiet. Not to bring it up. Especially in today's time, yeah? With all the craziness that's happening around us today, you can say something that will just make somebody go completely bonkers. They'll just go crazy because they don't agree with what you're saying. We have God, we have the Lord, we have Jesus Christ Amen. who lives in us. He guides us, he controls us, he lifts us up, he gives us what to say. Be aware. Remind yourself who you are. Remind yourself who you belong to. Remind yourself to show kindness. Remind yourself to be humble so that we can be a perfect example of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was the only man who could control his tongue. No one else on the face of this earth can ever do that except him. And he did it. And he did it so well that he confounded people, especially the, the Pharisees, the 
Sadducee. He just drove them crazy from his simple little sayings. And that was enough to just upset the heck out of them like things today. You make one little comment and someone will just go off the deep end on you. And it's sad that it's turned out to that way that we've gotten to the point where you know, people think lying is acceptable nowadays, which it's not. So I, re I remind you once again, people, my family, watch your words, but more so be aware of what's in your heart. Be aware of what you're feeling, what you believe, and don't let that just come out when, it, when it's unnecessary. I want to thank you guys this morning for listening to this. I miss you. It's been a while. I think a lot of you I haven't seen you since March of this year. Hang in there, people. Don't fade away. Fight the good fight. Stay here. Come back every Sunday. Should be easier now. You're at home. You don't have to get up an hour and a half early to get here <laughs> to church physically. You can just get up about half an hour early. Make yourself a cup of coffee. But sit down. Get in front of your computer. Turn on the word. Get back into church. It, it may be a virtual church, but it's still our church. Come on, so sorry. come back into our church. People, man. come on, man. Stay here. Stay with God. Believe him. Trust in him. I do. Every day I do. Because I can't do stuff by myself. Never can do stuff by myself. But to him, all things can be done. Thank you, family, this morning. I love you. You guys take care of yourselves. I will see you next week with part two. Amen. God bless you all. Word of the Charles. Hallelujah. Oh, that was so good. So rich. Amen. Come on, show your love for Uncle Charles. Respond, respond, respond. As you all do on Facebook Live, as if you were here live with us, go your hearts. There you go. I see it. The smiley faces. Yes. Hallelujah. So good to have you guys join us this morning. Hey, man, as you were speaking, Uncle Charles, the Lord just pressed on my heart. There's a spirit of religion um, that's coming, that's hovering over us. And when when you mentioned the Sadducees, you know, um, with accusing um Jesus uh, on the Sabbath and eating the bread, I just felt like the Lord is saying to us that we got to be careful as believers. And even with Paul confronting Peter, we got to be careful as believers because we too can fall in that snare. Uh, the, the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees were religious people, and it's a spirit of religion. And it's a fault-finding spirit. It's an accusation of the brethren spirit. Uh, it's a rebellious spirit, and it's a, a spirit of witchcraft. Um, man, a Jezebel spirit. Uh, basically. Um, and so I, I just want to pray over us right now. I feel like this is the, a timely word for us that we got to be careful as believers and not fall into that trap of the of, of religion like the Sadducees and the Pharisees, especially as believers. Because we can easily try and justify scripture to 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 say that we are right and, and, and our brothers or sisters in the Lord are wrong. And that's a, that's a religious spirit. Uh, amen. Let me give you an example. Uh, for example, we can declare Psalms 91 as over and over again and remain in, in this in this um, lockdown mode uh, and, and complain about it. And hey, how come we, we've been declaring Psalms 91, but we're not going back to church? Uh, we can also argue Proverbs 22, 3, a wise man sees danger and protects himself, but the foolish continue on and are harmed. And so we, we can justify either scripture, but at the same time, let's not accuse one another and say, well, I'm believing in Psalms 91, I'm going to go back. And go back and not, you know, practice the safeguards. We think we're going to come back to normal. It's not normal, guys. We got to we gotta be Akamai. This is God warning us. And we're not going to put the scripture to test. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing me? We're going to honor what's what's been out there. It's for our, any, any mandate that comes out is for our safety and protection. We cannot see it otherwise. I got to trust that the gov the, that the, um, our leaders, who the Bible also says to pray for, come on family, and, and cover them in prayer, that they are doing the right thing for our safety and our well-being. Yeah, mind you now, we are losing money for the economy, but that's, that's secondary. Primary is our safety. Amen? Whether you agree with me or not, primary is our safety. And you got to trust that we as a leadership are doing the same thing, that our concern is for your safety. 
whether you believe it or not. So that's that's the truth. That's the bottom line. Any mandate is to protect and provide for our safety and well-being. So protect yourself from um, your words. Powerful. Today's message was on point. Your words can either curse or bless us. Come on, somebody. Amen. And especially as a church in this time that we're in social isolation. And like Uncle Joe said, don't complain when you can just get up, roll out of bed, brush teeth, and wash your face and turn on church. Versus get up hour, half, hour and a half early to get ready and come physically. So everybody should be on right now in church. Amen. And, you, and this is the thing. We have a choice to make. I don't want to be in service or I'm not. And I pray that you choose to be in the presence of God, whether it's here with us or someplace else, but you are in church. And I pray as Legacy Christian Church family that you are faithful to attend church right now in this capacity. Amen. Because God is speaking loudly to all of us. Amen. But anyway, I feel led to pray for anybody who's been uh, part of that spirit of accusation that you are caught up with all that. And fear will bring the best or the worst of us. Come on, somebody. Are you hearing me? Because right now in this time, there is fear. There is panic. But if we believe in Jesus and trust God in this pandemic, that he will see us through. Come on. Fear is going to either take us to Jesus or take us away from Jesus. Fear is going to either cause us to accuse or to run to God in faith and trust. Amen? So if that's you, I just want, I just want to come in agreement with me. If that's you, you've been caught up in the spirit of accusation. And I'm coming as one who are with you as well, because I was caught up in it as well. May I not said it in my mouth, but in my mind I was thinking that, come on somebody, are you hearing me? And so I just want to repent and just repeat after me, say, Father God, Father God in, the in the name of Jesus, I repent, I repent for any accusations, accusations fault finding, rebellious, rebellious words that were thought that were and even spoken out of my mouth of my or mouth. thought in my mind in my against you, yes. And your people. Forgive me for, for, um, for being in agreement with that spirit, that fault finding, accusation, entitlement spirit. In Jesus' name, I repent, I renounce it in Jesus' name, and I release it to the cross once and for all. And I declare from the sun sets free. It's free indeed. In Jesus' name. Woo! Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, give the Lord a clap. Glory. Now it's time to give. How many of you are ready to give to the Lord this morning? Woo! Hallelujah. Uh, before we give, just again, quick, quick reminder, announcement. Don't forget to vote. Um, reg last day registered vote is tomorrow. So go and register if you haven't done already. Uh, you can register to vote online, in person or by mail, but I, I encourage you, if you can, do it online or do it in person. Honolulu Hale has it in person starting October 20th from 7 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and then on the voting day itself, or every day from October 20, early voting, 7 a.m., Monday, Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and then on the day of November 4th, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Honolulu Hale and also um, Kapole Hale, I believe it's called. But in Kapole, that new, um, building, the, the judiciary building. So go and vote in those two places. Amen. In person, in person, if you want your vote to count and you don't want to be a part of the, all that mail fraud or whatever, or online, I believe it's safe as well. Amen. Awesome. Our our scripture for uh, Thai comes from the book of Proverbs, I believe will be on the screen. There you go. Proverbs 1130. Say it with me, family. Ready? Go. The fruit of the righteous is the tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. Uncle Charles made mention of this. We are to go, say go, oh. and make disciples of all nations. Woo, hallelujah, I love that. Amen, and who who wins so is wise, and who eats from the tree of life, the fruit of the righteous is the tree of life. Hey, when we, um, when we take communion, we are reminded of the, the body of Jesus that was broken, beaten, and bruised for all our sickness and disease. And um, we are reminded of the juice, the cup of blood that was, that was shed for all our sin and shame. But also, as we give up our tithes and offerings, we're going to take a communion, by the way, so make sure you have your communion elements ready, your bread and your juice, as we want to partake of communion. But also, in, in terms of our tithes, we give to win souls. Come on, somebody, are you hearing me? 
If you, if you take your tithes and you say, Lord, I commit this tithes to you. I'm speaking to the believers. I commit this tithes to you because the tithes is, a, a, is an act of our, our worship unto the Lord. Amen. It's the test of our obedience and the, and the offerings is a measure of our generosity. And so your tithe is a measure of your obedience unto the Lord and the offering is a measure of generosity. And it goes to win souls for Jesus. Come on, somebody. Yes. It's not just, it doesn't just go here to pay for this building or for the, uh, the air conditioning, which is very important, by the way, because right now it's hot. But it's more so important for the winning of souls. And God has called us to make disciples. Amen. And so as you give, I just want to encourage you. I know it's hard to give in this time of, of, of economic downfall. Some of you are, are jobless. Some of you are. But hey, let me encourage you. Don't let that stop you from giving unto the Lord as an act of worship. Amen. Because God will see us through, through all of this. And in the long haul, you will be blessed seven times over. Come on, somebody. This I believe, this I trust. Amen. Because what the devil stole from us, he got to pay back seven times in Jesus' name. Amen. And so I want to encourage you, continue to be faithful. Faithful in little here and trust us with more. So God bless you as you give this morning. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this ability to give unto you, Lord God, what's rightfully yours. As this is a measure of our obedience unto you and the offering is a measure of generosity. And so we thank you, Lord God, in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this uh, economic downfall, that we, Lord God, as your people, continue to seek after you, continue to, to uh, pursue you, Lord God, in our offerings, in our tithes, Lord God, as this is a measure of our obedience unto you. And so we thank you for this opportunity to worship you, Lord God, with our tithes and offerings. Bless it as it goes to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name, and everybody say, Amen. 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 God bless you as you give, family. Hallelujah. Woo. Do we have an a offering or a tithe song that we can worship with? Awesome. Hey, let's worship unto the Lord and then we'll come back and do communion and get into a time of prayer. Amen. The sun is off. Oh. place right now every praise let's declare a praise report and prayer requests in jesus name amen here's some praise reports 16 salvations five baptisms and more to come come on family Woo! hallelujah mother-in-law's radiation going well yeah hallelujah young woman's group increases to 28 participants is that right 
Yes, 28 participants. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mom had a full, a full recovery with no injuries and returns home. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh, had a fall with no injuries and returns home. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Brother battling kidney cancer returns home from the hospital. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Encouraging his family. Glory to God. Legacy communication team creating fresh innovative ways to uh to leverage technology and digital strategies yes i want to thank our comm team uh john uh pastor daryl Uwe, jay jones and tony muranaka um guys we've launched um thank you to uh Uwe and um daryl and john and and again tony and jay uh we launched google classroom for our kingdom kids youth and young adults uh, for life groups, come on, somebody. And I can't wait to get our kids connected in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Amen. Yes. Um, also, our, our uh, Healing Hearts classes has been off the charts um, with Google Classroom and Google Meets. And so God is faithful. God is good. Amen. And we're getting connected virtually. Hallelujah. Legacy communication team, God bless you and thank you for your time and talents for such a time as this. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Cool. Continue on with praise reports. Rupert uh, Tripp Jr., COVID-19 test negative, released to home care. Glory to God. And by the way, that was at that Hilo um, Veterans Home, yeah? Yeah, Okutsu, a uh, veteran, Hilo, the one in Hilo that has that outbreak. And Rupert is a man of God who worships the Lord. And so God is good. Come on, somebody. Amen. Ooh, favor of God. Thank you, Jesus. Business able to businesses able to reopen, get economy moving in the right direction. Come on. Woo! Hallelujah. A beautiful day today. Took grandkids to the beach and cleaned the yard. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Woo! I got to do that yesterday. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Yard work, nothing beats yard work. Come on. Legacy is keeping the main thing, the main thing. Precious, priceless prayer. Praise and worship, declaring, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. Say it again, family. Ready to go. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Let's let's not come into a time of prayer, but before we do, let's give God one praise break. One more time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Every praise is to our God. Hallelujah. Father, we come now in a time of intercession unto you, Lord God, declaring 2 Chronicles 7, 14, my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways that we will hear from heaven, forgive our sins, heal our land. So God, forgive our sins and heal our land, God, as we come interceding on behalf of your people corporately in the name of Jesus and locally, God. Father, in the name of Jesus. Family, if you need prayer requests, I want you to um, put them in the chat room and Pastor Dow will let me know. So go ahead and do that right now, prayer requests or even praise reports at this hour as we come in prayer. So Lord, we just intercede on your behalf. We declare Acts 12, 5, that fervent and persistent prayer was made by the church for Peter. And suddenly, the chains broke off and he walked out of jail free. And Lord, we declare that freedom right now over your people, Lord God. As we come asking for deliverance from alcohol, drug addiction, nicotine addiction, mental illness, homelessness, depression, pride, unforgiveness, suicide, murder in schools, jealousy, anger, and COVID-19. We serve you your eviction notice in the name of Jesus. We command you to leave right now, cease and decease in Jesus' name. Father, we ask that you break, shatter, and destroy, Lord God, all these entities, Lord God, that come against you, against your people, Lord. In Jesus' name, we declare it is broken offer of your people once and for all and father we thank you lord god psalms 24 1 the earth is the lord's and everything in it the world and all who live in it and so lord we ask your protection and provision lord god financial increase and growth over your church family for such a time as this in jesus name we thank you lord god as the economy is down is going downhill lord your people is going uphill father forgive us for trusting in the white house and not in your house lord god your church where you reside father god so lord we pray forgive us for looking outside when we should be looking inside our heart where you dwell the temple of the holy spirit is your people so lord we pray increase Financial increase and growth, Father, over your church, your people, in Jesus' name, Father God. And we thank you. We will not be moved by circumstances. We will not be moved by challenges or trials and tribulations. But we will be moved by your presence, in Jesus' name. Father, protection and wisdom, Lord God. As Hawaii churches and businesses reopen, Lord God, for food, shelter, and provision for those experiencing lack, in the name of Jesus, as well as loss. 
Father, for safety and protection for children who are, who are, who are, who are physically returned to the classrooms. Father, I thank you for wisdom, Lord God, over those in leadership, Lord God, protecting the lives of our teachers and our children and our kupuna as well, Lord God. Father, we ask for, for uh, our safety and protection of our military honor, ohana deployed uh, overseas and, and in the Middle East, Father God, in the name of Jesus. So we thank you, Lord God, and we lift up our first responders unto you, those men and women who are daily, Lord God, in the hospitals, in the care home, Lord God. Um, firefighters, policemen, EMS workers, Lord, we lift them up to you right now in the name of Jesus. We pray your hedge of protection over them right, right now, and Lord, we say peace over Jerusalem. Father, over your people right now, shalom over Jerusalem in Jesus' name. And Lord, we lift up, Lord God, our corporate prayers, Lord God, for uh, Mother Anne at home, uh, feeling weak, Lord God. Give her strength, Lord God, and for her brothers as well, Uncle Robert, Eric, and and, and, and Canston, Lord, fighting heart disease and cancer, Lord God. Cover them right now. We plead your blood over them in Jesus' name, Father God. Salvation for those who don't know you yet, Lord God. We pray their salvation, Lord God, for loneliness, discouragement, and isolation, God. We pray pro uh, over pro against prostate, abdominal, breast, and ovarian cancer, and lymphoma, lymphoma Lord, all forms of cancer. We, we declare you are finished and dealt with in Jesus' name. We plead your blood over them right now, God. We thank you, God. For your wonder-working power is the blood of Jesus. Pray against diabetes, high blood pressure, strokes, and cardiac disease in Jesus' name. Cease and decease right now in the name of Jesus. We come against bipolar and schizoaffective disorder and, all, and any and all forms of mental illness. We speak against it in Jesus' name, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that by your stripes we are healed. And we declare that over your people who need healing physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually in Jesus' name. And Father, we come in repentance on behalf of your country, the United States of America. And we ask for reconciliation and restoration, God, in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we lift up a special prayer over President Trump and First Lady uh, Melana Trump, Lord God, as they battle COVID-19. God, Lord, I pray you cover them in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we shut them off to the accuser of the brethren, Lord God, fault-finding spirit, Lord God, uh, over President Trump, that, re that rebellious spirit. We come against it right now over President Trump and his family his wife and his children. Lord, we pray a special hedge of protection over them right now. You said to pray for those in authority, those in leadership. So as your church, we cover them right now in the name of Jesus. Father, this is not a popularity vote. This is a moral vote, Lord God. So we pray, Lord God, that we will vote our values, our morals, godly morals, godly values, which is what he stands for. But Lord, we cover him right now in healing, Father. We plead the blood of Jesus over President Trump and Melania Trump. In Jesus' name, Lord God. And we also ask for protection over our Vice President Pence and his wife and family as well, Lord God. So these things we ask and pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. And all in agreement, say, oh, wait, sorry, not done yet. Do we have any other requests coming in, Pastor Darrell? Father, we lift up Jay's brother, Jerome, that's going to have surgery to remove cancer. We pray, Lord God, bless the hand of the surgeon, Lord God, that they'll be able to get out all of cancer, all the cancer, and, Lord, we even believe for a miracle, Lord God, a suddenly, mm, that, Lord, they will look up and, and see before before even uh, performing the surgery that it is gone completely. By your stripes, he's healed in Jesus' name, Lord God. And even if not, we declare that surgeon hand will be anointed in Jesus' name. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that you cover him either way, Lord God. And we lift up um, Kayleen, who has a swollen knee. Our sister Killing Williams, Lord God, heal her knee, Father God. We command that swelling to go down, and whatever's causing it, we command it to be gone in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you for Hannah. Um, praises that the family's all together, even mom is here, and her doctor visit was good. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, we lift up Brother JR and his graves disease, Lord God. We pray healing over him as well. In the name of Jesus, Father God, this ICU nurse unable to care for. Children gives birth to premature baby, Lord God, uh, remains in hospital battling COVID. We pray healing over her right now, protection over baby as well. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to heal Jessica Carter and son Hoppa, who was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Her son Hoppa, we lift up Hoppa right now in the name of Jesus. We've been praying for him, and we declare, Lord, by your stripes, he's healed, Lord God. Bless your son Hoppa, Lord, in Jesus' name, Father God. We thank you in advance for the, the testimony that will come out from this, Lord God, and a friend who returns to an abusive relationship and now can, unable to contact. Father, we pray as your protection over that friend that we come against that abuse, that, that spirit of abuse right now over, over them in Jesus' name. Cover him, protect him, uh, or her, whoever that may be, Lord God, we lift them up right now in the name of Jesus. 
and a brother with with uh, severe heart car, uh, dam, damage. We pray healing over that brother with the severe heart damage in the name of Jesus. And we thank you. We lift these prayers up to you, and we all come in agreement and say, Amen. 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 Give the Lord a clap. Hallelujah. Hey, I got one final testimony, and thank you guys for praying for my um my wife's aunt, and and I say this with the utmost respect for for my family, my wife and her aunt, Auntie Auntie Deb, bless her heart. I I refer to her as a atheist on steroids. Yeah. I said that because and and this is just Auntie and her, her personality. She um she know she know. She no, she no pull no, no punches. She straight from the hip. She, you get what you see. And every time, even before I got in, became a pastor. Every time we see her, every other word was J, J C this, G, G, you know, G this, in place of the the for everybody's favorite F word. But she would always use J C and G and G word and feel no pain. Doesn't matter if you're a pastor or what. She just tell it like it is. Well, in the last three to four weeks, my wife got to um, care for her and minister to her. And during that time, man, I just, my wife got to, God just softened her heart. And she turned to the Lord and, and gave her heart to Jesus. And, 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 and I, I, that is a miracle, family. That is a miracle. Like I mentioned, Auntie Deb was on steroids, atheist on steroids. And if you know anything to do with steroids, nobody tell you what to do. That, 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 that thing is like, you, get, you need anger management anyway so that was a miracle in itself how God used that cancer to bring him her to him amen and so it's never too late I'm reminded of those prisoners on the cross and one was remorseful and asked Jesus hey remember me this day when you go into your kingdom and Jesus says today you'll be with me in paradise and that's what I was reminded of the Lord showed me that it's never too late to give your heart to Jesus amen yeah. and I know Uncle Charles um Mm-hmm. made a call out for salvation but if anybody there I feel like there's somebody else that needs to come to Jesus if that's you man I just want you to just come with me and just say this prayer with me say Father God Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. I repent of my sin Amen. and today I confess Amen. with my mouth Jesus is Lord and I believe in my heart you he raised him from the grave I am born again and from this day forward I choose to follow you and your word all the days of my life I'm sorry, Lord, but I thank you for your grace, for your forgiveness, for your mercy. I receive it today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you said that prayer, and even if you said it earlier, call us at 262-8021, 262-8021. We want to celebrate with you. The Bible says the host of heaven rejoices over one person that comes to Jesus. That means they're having a luau for you in heaven. Yes. Amen. So please call us, 262 so we can celebrate with you. The best is yet to come, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Awesome. Oh, some more prayer requests. Taylin, uh, Gigi, as she goes through radiation. Thank you, Lord. We covered that. This is from our kingdom kids. Pray for Makamaya. She's sad because we cannot gather at church. Oh, Makamaya, bless your heart, my grandbaby. Pray for CJ's distance learning, that he can understand the lesson and receive help from his teachers. Lord, we pray for all our kids going through distance yeah. learning who are struggling. With virtual learning, Father, we pray, Lord God, you give them the wisdom, the understanding, and the knowledge, and the insight, Lord God, to understand this virtual learning, Lord God, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, Kingdom Kids. Thank you, Hannah, for uh, texting us this prayer request. And we got praises from our Kingdom Kids. Uh, Gigi is feeling good after radiation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I think that was in our big one, too, as well. Uh, Taylor and CJ shared their hearts about the word, Ephesians 6.14. God is good. Amen. Auntie Sherry's doggy's foot is healed in Jesus' name. I love it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give the Lord praise for our kingdom kids. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. Well, now it's time to take communion, family. If you have a communion elements, wow, this is so good. I love this transition from prayer to communion. Amen. Thank you, God. If you have your elements, go ahead and grab it. We're going to partake of com- communion, as I mentioned earlier. Same scripture as the Thai scripture. I think it's coming on the board, Proverbs 11.30. Family, read it with me. Can you see it on the screen? Go for it. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. Guys, the, the reason why Jesus came in and sacrificed his body on the cross is because we can go back all the way to the Garden of Eden. In that garden, Adam ate of the, the, the fruit of the tree of, 
of the knowledge of good and evil. And that brought upon the curse in the land. And so by default, we were all born into sin because of that. And this, we have the tree of life. Come on, somebody. And his name is Jesus. I believe it's in Proverbs 22, 2, where it talks about the tree of life in the garden and that its leaves brings healings to the nations. Hallelujah. And so for us, this tree of life is referenced to Jesus himself. Amen. And that we get to partake of him literally and spiritually through um, vicariously through the elements. So again, the bread symbolizes his body that was broken, beaten, and bruised for all our sickness and disease. And the cup of juice that symbolizes his blood that was shed for all our sin and shame. Amen? Amen? And so we get to partake of this tree of life, glory to God, that he has redeemed us from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and given us the tree of life that we can eat freely of as a benefit to us in Jesus' name. Amen? Give me a second or two or three because um, this thing is kicking my okole right now. I can say okole. Yeah. <laughs> Too bad I said it already. Hallelujah. So he took the took the bread that symbolizes his body again that was beaten, broken, and bruised for us. It says, as often as you eat this, do this in remembrance of me. Lord, bless this element so we partake of it. In Jesus' name, amen. So go ahead and eat, family. Likewise, he took this cup of juice. And he drank it. He said, often as you drink this, do this in remembrance of me, his blood. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, family, now it's time for Witness in a Minute with our very own evangelist, David Georges. Check this out. Aloha, Legacy family, and welcome once again to Witness in a Minute, where the goal is to provide you the tools and encouragement to carry out the Great Commission. Remember when you were a little kid and you couldn't wait to see if your parents got you the Christmas presents you really wanted? You knew exactly which gifts were yours under the tree long before Christmas morning. You even knew how to carefully peel back the wrapping and the tape without ripping anything so you could peek inside. Then you could hardly wait until Christmas Day to open up your gift. As Christians, that should be our attitude towards gifts of the Spirit. In fact, the Bible tells us to desire spiritual gifts, especially to prophesy in 1 Corinthians 14.1. This means we should especially want and cultivate these gifts. The Bible warns, do not quench the Spirit, do not despise prophecy or literally don't depreciate prophetic utterance or spurn the gifts. To quench something means to extinguish it by putting out a fire. Like when you break camp, for example, you extinguish the fire by pouring water on it and shoveling dirt all over it. You quench the fire. In the same way, if the Holy Spirit is working in your life and has gifts he wants to miss you to use and discover, you can quench the spirit by saying, I don't want any of that, or I'm not even looking for the gift. In fact, this could even be a sin because James 4.17 says, Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is a sin. The Bible also specifically tells us in 1 Corinthians 1.7 that we should come short in no gift as we eagerly wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, let's desire spiritual gifts and pray that God will send them and may God bless your next adventure as you witness in a minute. on thank you evangelist david georges for that word every time you, you speak on that it ties into the message so good and now thinking about the fire and the tongue how it only takes a spark on the positive side it only takes a spark come on somebody to get a fire burning amen the fire of the holy ghost and that's what the spiritual gifts is about the fire of the holy ghost amen that we can speak prophetically into one another's lives. And the spirit of prophecy is what? The testimony of Jesus. Woo! Amen. Thank you, Evangelist David George, for that I'll witness in a minute. Hey, we want to do something special today. We want to honor a special young lady today uh, who's been speaking of fire and Holy Ghost power. Uh, she's been on fire from day one, and we want to honor her, uh, her baptism certificate. Um, oh, and it's also, thank you, Genevieve, for honoring your pastor's uh, for that text, amazing text. Genevieve, if you're on, thank you so much for honoring your pastors. Uh, I didn't know that today was annual, our pastor's appreciation 
day or month. Is it month? And thank you for remembering us, Genevieve. You are, are such a blessing. And man, it's so good to uh, to be honored and to be appreciated. So thank you so much, Genevieve, for honoring your pastors. We love you. Uh, God bless you. And um, <laughs> woo, just as Pastor Ross says, pastorship begets pastorship. Or whatever the gift is that God has called you to. In Jesus' name, amen. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. But we want to honor Ui on her baptism. So, Ui, if you can come up, please. We want to present you with your baptism certificate. Come on, family. Give it up. Give it up. Woo! Ui Nani Mahiko. Congratulations, Ui, on your baptism. Yay! Awesome. <laughs> so, we want to honor you also, Ui, not just with the certificate, but we want to, I want to treasure hunt Ui Nani right now in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Amen. We want to bless you because that is an expression of an, uh, that is an outward expression of, of your of your faith and the inner conviction of your trust in the Lord. Amen. And so we want to um, honor you. And I'll start it. God put this on my heart this morning as I was preparing to come over and praying in the Holy Spirit. And the Lord showed me this time clock. But not just one. Like he showed me all the countries, like universal time clocks. And I was looking at it and I said, well, what does this mean? And he says, in, in, each, in each time zone, there are specific times and clocks. And he was showing me the different languages that these clocks were in. And I'm like, what does that mean, Lord? And then he showed me Esther 4.4 when his uncle Mordecai said to Esther, you're appointed this position for such a time as this. And that was to influence not just that, that uh, kingdom, but the, um, the, the, the Jewish people um, to bring them out of captivity because, you know, how, the whole story, right? You know? And I know some time ago, we're in our life group, we were doing the thing, and I felt like this word was for the guys, but I was trying to get them to, to speak. But then you had said, and I think Nikki had said, Uncle, I felt like that was for us. Sorry, warrior. Warrior. Being warriors. And at that time, Mulan had just come out, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so on point. And, it was, and also, there was a prophetic word online, I think it was in Fort Watch, of the um, Esther anointing. I think it was the hammer and the oil that Paula sent out. And I'm like, wow, this is so timely. And so I just felt like for, for you, the time clock represented the different natures, uh, cultures and nations in the different time zones. And I feel like God is sending you out for such a time as this. Um, and because of virtual, online virtual, which is what you're doing to help us, like, and he, he's already doing it, like your friend in um, New, Zealand. New Zealand, and you guys connecting. And I'm like, bang, suddenly, like God is saying, that's me. You're going to reach nations. And you've already traveled to New Zealand, and I feel like God is saying, I'm taking you to even other countries, that I'm going to blow your mind because you have been blowing my mind, says the Lord, with your faithfulness and your just your simple childlike faith. Amen? And so Amen. I just want to speak that over you for such a time as this. And, and every time you call me Uncle Pio, I feel like Uncle Mordecai. You know, I'm like, oh, God, I, I get it. You know, like, that's what the relationship we share, like, I can trust you with the word. I can trust you with the gifts of the spirit. Oh my, God, I was masking. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we'll paint you. We'll paint. Come on, somebody. That's Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> wow. See how intentional our God is? Come on. Woo. Wow. <laughs> that was the Holy Ghost fire. Amen. So, anybody else want to share? Uncle Charles at the Bargo, David Georges, Elsa in the lobby, Uncle, Uncle Daryl, Pastor Daryl. I love that you call us uncle because for me, the Bible, it reminds me of, oh, i got to find that, that word, is that it's good that you have all these leaders, but you lack fathers. And so for me, it's just a sign of um, family. You know, I'd rather be called uncle than, not that I don't like being called pastor, but I just love that family, you know, just the family of God. And so thank you for that honor of being uncle. Amen? Amen. So that was the word that God gave, uh, gave me to use for such a time as this. Uh, nations, nations in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Um, um, I have testimony. So oh, go you for shared it. Esther, and earlier we were reading, and I was reading passages about, I don't even know where we were reading out of, but it was like talking about fasting. And then this morning I was like, oh, maybe I was supposed to fast. And I was feeling like it yesterday. 
and I was just not having the best day and it was so tied into what we talked about today and we're doing a Bible study like um, on gossip our women <laughs> and I was like oh this is so on point and we're like talking about the verses that you brought up today so good and so this morning literally I was as I was driving in I was like maybe I'm supposed to three day fast again and then like wow. you said Esther and Esther is always the three day fast so I was like, oh, okay, I hear you. I hear you. I won't be eating. Okay, I got it. <laughs> but yeah. Amen. Thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> Don't go far. Um, this is from Reggie. Um, Reggie Brown. Hey, Reg. I see Uya on a surfboard. The surfboard is able to take her all over the world. The water she's on is the living water of God. Amen. You will do great things for his kingdom, Uya. Uya, you surf. No, I don't. So that's a testimony to God because, like, I can't be doing that without him. Hey, man, <laughs> come on. So good. <laughs> Woo. Wow. Hey, there's a group called Surfing the Nations. That's prophetic. Come on. Hey, Amen. Is that um, Robert Rivera? No. Who is a true blessing to our church? Thank you, Jesus, for our sister. Amen. Kayleen and Hannah say, God, our con, God, relation. And <laughs> that girl is on. Um, Fire. Oh, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. So good. Awesome. Irene uh, and Elsa. Irene says, you have a gift of interpretation when you read the word. It opens up like a beautiful flower in such a vivid and teacher's dream. Thank you. Elsa says, Ui Nani, I get a picture of a lighthouse. You have been sharing your light, wisdom, and fire of the Holy Spirit. Spirit, not only with our church family, but with your generation and reaching all your friends and reaching and touching hearts you don't even know. The Thank seeds you. you have been planting, watering, and harvesting. Hallelujah. So good. Yeah. Amen. Woo. Hallelujah. Awesome. Wow. <laughs> I get, I'll go for it. I think the Lord just gave me. You know when you go hiking up to Moscow and you're looking out and you happen to see the whales and the dolphins just, and you stand there and you're wondering where the Lord is taking you next. And, and I see you going to great lengths to share his love. Thank you. Amen. Ooh, so good. I appreciate that. So that I, year, we oh, went okay. to hike after my papa passed away. We went on that hike and we saw whales and dolphins and the sun rising. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Amen. So the Lord just gave me um the elements, earth, wind, and fire. Not the band, but although I love <laughs> earth, wind, and fire, you guys know how crazy I am about them. But he showed me uh Genesis in the beginning, how he created the heavens and the earth. And, I, and like earth, um, like he's planted your feet on this ground, solid ground. Um the earth represents God's foundation, that he has you on his foundation. Uh, the wind is, um, I reminded of that song by um, Bette Midler, wing, wing, Wind Beneath My Wings. Um, that's you, that's you, you, you are that wind beneath the wings of your people, the people that you reach and touch, you bring hope, you bring light, you bring life to them uh, with the gospel of Jesus and just you being you. Um, you have something about your presence that um, attracts people and we know that's it's the presence of God in you um, and then fire the fire of the Holy Spirit that you bring with you there's a authenticity about you but there's also the fire of God the boldness of God that you bring with you that people want and, and cherish and will listen because of your authenticity and that draws you to them amen, amen. awesome and so in that creation on the seventh day God rested and I feel like the Lord is saying he's going to bring you rest as well like time of resting and refreshing um, to just re keep rebuilding and rebuilding. Like the more you pour out, the more he's pouring in. And in those times of pouring in, that's when you're resting and refreshing on the Lord. Amen? Yeah. Awesome. All day. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else for um, Ui? Amen. Awesome, Ui. You received that, Ui? All of it. Amen. So family, extend your hands to Uri. Let's pray a blessing over her. Father, we thank you for Uri, your daughter, that you have her in the palm of your hands, Father God. That, um, Lord, the Bible says that 
the anxious longing of creation always eagerly for the revealing of the sons and daughters of God. So we thank you, God, for the revealing of you to your daughter, Ui, for such a time as this, Lord God. And so we thank you for this prophetic word that's been spoken over her. We thank you for bringing her to us, her faith and her faithfulness, her childlike faith and her faithfulness, Lord God, that, Lord, to whom much is given, much is required. As faithful as little, you trust her with more. So we thank you, Lord God, for bringing the increase in her life and being the more in her life, Lord God, as she honors you and treasures your presence. And so we bless her with this word, Lord God, and we say, seal it by your blood and by the Holy Spirit as we declare the enemy is defeated and cannot steal it. In Jesus' name, that she'll be able to retrieve it at the proper time, at the proper place, with the proper people. In Jesus' name, and we all say, Amen. 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 Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, anybody, anybody, we want to pick somebody. Uncle Charles, you pick somebody. Four? Treasure hunt. We want to bless. <laughs> On your on this, just oh, anybody. Okay. Whoever got leads you. And this, the reason why I get some people to pick is because I don't want it to be I don't want it to be Pastor Pio. This is about God and, and and blessing you. Come on, somebody. I'm just a part of the team. Say team. team. That's here to bless people. Amen. And if we make ourselves available, the Bible says, "You who is willing and obedient, Isaiah 119, that they will eat the good of the land." And we are connected to this Aina. Amen. Through our, our, our faithfulness and our righteous acts to the Lord. Come on, somebody. Paula. Paula. Oh, Paula Warner. Paula, you are tagged. Come on, somebody. We are going to highlight Paula Warner today in the name of Jesus. Let's speak a word of prophecy over her. Remember, the word of prophecy is a testimony of Jesus that we want to bless, encourage, motivate, equip. Um, our sister Paula, God's daughter, right now for such a time as this, in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo, so good. So guys, go ahead, Paula. We want to bless you today. We want to prophesy over you. If you have any treasure hunts, go ahead and type it in. Anything, any words to encourage our sister Paula right now in, in uh, Northern California? Second Peter 1.20, thank you, Prophet Irene. Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Prophet Irene, for that word. Amen. This is all spirit-led by Holy Ghost. Amen. So any words for Paula, guys, just go ahead and type it in. In Psalms 126, a joyful return to Zion. When the Lord brought back the captivity to Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seeds for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bring his sheaves with him. Um, and we also talked about um, Psalm 23 this morning and like how the Lord is like with us and his rod and his staff will protect us. That's 23, right? What's that? Is that right? His rod and his staff will protect us. Yes, Psalm, Psalm 23. Yeah. yeah, and so I feel like those two go hand in hand because it, it even tells us that... Um, those who sow tears shall reap in joy. So, like, things can be bad, but but God is always with us, and then His peace is is always with us when when we lean into Him and keep faith in Him. So, just be encouraged um, for His joyful return um, if you're in a hard time. Amen. So Paula, I know um, that you are going, and everybody in Northern Cal is going through those crazy forest fires, and and I, I you know, I don't want to not, but I just see fire. Um, and the scripture that the Lord gave to me for you is First Corinthians three thirteen. 
says the work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. And for me, what it means for you is that in, in this time that you're going through testing, um, whether it be with your family, whether it be uh, financial testing, or whatever, whatever it be in your life, I feel like the, the, the Lord is, is that fire, as you go through the test of fire, with, with, again, with the circumstances, with the trials, with the challenges, that is a test of your faith. And as you are faithful and trusting in the Lord, that you will come out um, ahead because of the test uh, uh, that you've been going through. And the fire represents the challenges, the trials, the tribulations. But because of your trust in the Lord, your faithfulness to trust God in the midst of those tests, that you will come out unscathed, untouched, and not even like the, like the three Hebrew boys that were thrown in the fire. They couldn't even smell the fire. They came out on top and victorious because Jesus was in the fire with them. Come on, are you hearing me, Paula? So I feel like you're going to come out not even smelling like fire, but uh, uh, being that you are in the fire, but you are with Jesus in that fire, and you're trusting him, and you're holding on to him, and you're not bowing down to circumstances. You're not bowing down to the challenges or the trials, but you're trusting and bowing down to Jesus, and he's bringing you through that fire, whatever you're going through, those tests of fire. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm sorry, but she's in high Oh, please. You will go into the nations and heal the sick. When you stand, stand, you will not stay. Come on. Amen. Awesome. Yeah. So, and, and I, you know, even in the, I think you're going to, um, you're asthmatic, I'm not sure, but that even that you're trusting the Lord for healing, that God will bring you through, that by your stripes he is healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. And even this fire may be testing you physically, and God is bringing you through. Awesome. Uh, this is from Elsa. Paula, always so encouraging and lives out faith daily in the smallest or biggest of circumstances. Never doubting the Lord and His goodness, but completely trusting in the Lord and His sovereignty over your life and family. Amen. Amen. Paula responds, yes, Apostle, thank you so much. Needed that encouraging word. Amen. Awesome. Anybody else? This is also from Prophet Irene. Paula is steadfast, immovable, always abounding in him, a true coal miner. Hallelujah. What is done underground in danger benefits many. Glory to God. Ooh, speaking of coal, I, I, I see a vision of a barbecue pit. Um, old school bar barbecue pit, the ones you, you use the coal to burn with. Uh, not this gasoline, but the coal, or not propane gas, but the coal. So I see that one coal that you light and then you put in, and that one coal causes every other coal to spark. And so speaking of fire, you you bring the fire, you bring, and um, Uncle Charles' word is so fitting, that one spark ignites the whole forest, and that one coal ignites the whole um what you call barbecue pit and so that coal amen and and you, you know you can easily take that coal and put it on the side but it's not it's not good on its own so i feel like the lord is saying he's bringing you to a to a people where you're going to light them on fire and maybe i don't know if you found a church home but i see you igniting a church igniting a people with fire god's holy fire uh amen that you you're that light that that, that was needed to light that 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 whole uh Coal that people that God is bringing into us see that uh, happening in you, Paula, in Jesus' name, Amen. Mm -hmm. I remind of this song. Um, oh, a long time ago, you. I think you probably know the artist. It only takes a spark to get a fire going. Remember that, Daryl? Mm -hmm. To all those around, mm -hmm. warm up in its glory. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you spread His love to everyone. You want to pass it on. Pass it on. That's right. What is the artist's name, Pastor Darrell? So I feel like God is saying, you're going to pass on that torch, that light of God. You're going to set a, 
a people ablaze with Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost power. Wow. See, that's God. That's conf confirmation. Man, Sandy Patty. Correct? I want to say Sandy Patty. Come on, you, we old school. We old school. Hey, God has a sense of humor, but he wants to laugh with us. It's the joy of the Lord, amen, that he reminds of us of this, these songs. Paula, I know you know that song, Paula. You got to know that song. You old school like me. <laughs> like us. <laughs> Come on, we're having fun in the Lord this morning, amen. I think it's Sandy Patty. I want to say Sandy oh, Patty. <laughs> but Pass It On is the name of that song. But that's you. You're going to pass on that light of the Lord, the fire of God um, that's going to be infectious because you are infectious. You have the Holy Ghost anointing and power in you, Paula. Amen. Awesome. Anybody else? I feel like David Georges has a word for you. <laughs> David, you have a word for Paula? Yeah, you're up here. I think it's Sandy Patty, though, Paula. Um, Pass It On is the is the, the title of that song. Um, let me see. I want to just clarify it. You got to listen to the song. Very encouraging. The, Kaiser is the original one. Oh. In the, in the 40s and 50s. Wow, that was 40s and 50s. Kurt Kaiser, you said? Kirk Kaiser, original artist of Pass It On. I think um, Sandy Patty also sang it. I like her version. I believe it's Sandy Patty. Anyway, so Father, we just pray. Uh, extend your hands, family, to um, our sister Paula. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, release this word upon your daughter. We thank you for this prophetic word utterance unto your daughter. Uh, Paul, oh Lord, seal it by your blood and by the Holy Spirit, and we declare the enemy is defeated and cannot steal it. And so, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for this prophetic word spoken over your daughters. Uh, we ask that you would just uh, watch over it, Lord God, and I thank you that you watch over your word to perform it and to bring it to pass. In Jesus' name, Lord God, that you'll be able to retrieve it at the proper time, at the proper place, with the proper people. In Jesus' name, and everybody say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, Paula. Awesome. Well, that will conclude our services for today. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, stay safe. Uh, again, let's be intentional, relational, and generational in honoring each other and honoring God. Amen. The Lord bless you, protect you. Oh, wait. Here we go. David Georges, to the faithful, you show yourself faithful. To those, oh, where'd they go? Okay, this is from David George's. To the faithful, you show yourself faithful. To those with integrity, you show integrity. To the pure, you show yourself pure. But to the crooked, you show yourself shrewd. You rescue the humble, but your eyes watch the proud and you and humiliate and humiliate them. Second Samuel 22, 36 to 26 to 28. New Living Translation. Amen. Awesome, Paula. Thank you, David George's. Awesome. Finally, I want to declare a priestly blessing over us. The Lord bless you, protect you, smile on you, be gracious to you, show his favor and grant you his peace. Shalom in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Today is National Taco Day. Today is National Taco Day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, celebrate Fiesta Taco Day today. Amen. Mm. <laughs> oh, no. Taco Day. Amen. <laughs> Oh, good word, Uncle Charles. Timely, man. Hallelujah. God is faithful.
Amen.